Disclaimer, if you haven't seen the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, click off now. How's it going everyone? HFT RB Fun Times here, back with another video and all that jazz. I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's November 1st, I should have done this yesterday, but I wanted to wait a couple days for it, and uh, you know, you know, as you do, as you do. I had shit going on yesterday that I was waiting for, and stuff, and it didn't happen, and I was pissed, and it's fine, because it's a thing now. That being said, I digress. What I can officially say, though, is... Spoiler alert! I'm going to be talking about the FNAF movie! So if you haven't seen it, get the fuck out of here if you care about spoilers. Or stay and complain. Uh, that works out for me. But, yeah, it'll, it's fine. <laughs> Make your own choice in life, it's fine. Poor or not. Alright, you gone? You Alright, cool. Oh, you came back and you saw the movie? Okay, good. So, <laughs> for anyone, um, before I actually move any forward with this, for anyone watching this that has not seen the movie... Go in with the generalized mindset of this is the Five Nights at Freddy's movie based off of Five Nights at Freddy's. Not Five Nights at Freddy's, the first game, just Five Nights at Freddy's. Because they kind of cover bases on like a lot of the games, and that's, you know, pretty, pretty much it. So if you just go in with an open mind, and you go in knowing that it's not solely based around the first game and its lore. It's it's a hodgepodge of Easter eggs and characters and a mishmash of this, that, and the other thing. Think of a child getting a box of Crayola crayons. And they spill those crayons out so they can use them. And then when it's time to put them away, they're not in their correct color, you know, patterned spot. They're a lot like, you know, the green is where the blue should be, and the blue is where the fucking black should be. And the red somehow made its way into the yellow. But that's just how it goes sometimes, you know? Like, life is strange. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Now, for real, for real, if you have not seen the FNAF movie, exit stage left, please. Or stay. But I'm gonna literally be spoiling everything about the film. I right, good. I shouldn't need any more time than that for someone to click off and do what they're gonna do, especially since I'm already, like, you know, talking or saying this shit, so, whatever. So, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie as a whole, as what it is, at face value, unpopular opinion, I thought it was fantastic. I, it, it exceeded my expectations. It filled them and raised them by quite a bit. So that's really nice. So... Like I said, the movie's a hodgepodge of, like, references and Easter eggs. Like, you got some of the Funko plush toys in there. I'm sure you can find all the characters, like, all five characters, like, Freddy, Bonnie, Foxy, Chica, Golden Freddy. You you probably find those. Maybe a Springtrap or a Puppet. I don't know. Depends on if how hard you look and what you find, necessarily. But, you know, outside of that, there's that. There's, uh, you know... They do touch base on uh, FNAF 1, 2, 3 and Security Breach because they've got, you know, they got a Balloon Boy statue that jump scares uh, Mike Schmidt. For whatever reason, they never say his middle name, but you know who it is. Because one dude at the beginning comes close to saying his name, but doesn't actually say his name. So there's that. Now, that being said, um, those uh, old Finance at Freddy's uh, security badges that you can buy that you could have bought, like, years ago when the games first came out. Uh, you can still buy them on Amazon today. They bought a shit ton of those and put them in, like, the prize uh, counter in, like, one of the, you know, cases, crates, whatever, of prizes. And I thought that was really fucking cool, because I'm like, oh my god, look, they got that thing! It was fucking lovely. Now, uh, moving on from that, there are way more Easter eggs. I... No shit didn't get them all. 
And there's a lot of references that I'm sure went over my head. I'd have to do a double take on the film, not gonna lie to you. So that's the thing. <sighs> you have to excuse me, it's like early in the morning. It's like, what, fucking probably 7.30. Oh no, it's 8.40. My bad, it's almost 9 o'clock. I woke up at like 7? I think? I don't fucking know. So... Yeah, no, um... Sorry, the fucking timing got me all fucked up mentally now. Mentally, mentally? Mentally. It got me fucked up a little bit. Okay, so. Um, FNAF film. Great. References. Great. Now, in terms of the first three games, I guess we'll start from there. They obviously referenced the first game via the location, the animatronics, it's abandoned, it looks abandoned. You know, Night Guard, Mike Schmidt... That's one. Two was referenced by Balloon Boy and any other, like, FNAF 2 merch or what have you that may or may not have been there at that per uh, that moment in time. Uh, three was referenced by the ending of the film, which, yes, I'm already going to spoil that. But, again, if you already clicked off because you haven't seen the movie, cool. So, William Afton gets fucking caught in the Springlock suit. And that's a reference, obviously, to the third game at the end, <coughs> where it shows how he ended up in that suit. So, not the third game necessarily, just how he ended up in there. And, I don't know, I thought that was, like, kind of fucking cool. That was a nice little thing to see. Then you have Vanessa from Security Breach, even though she's not a security guard, she is an officer. And I believe she's the adopted daughter of William Afton, unless that's his actual biological daughter. Don't fucking know. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I believe uh, William Afton's actual daughter was Elizabeth. Unless I'm mistaken, I don't fucking know. Uh, all I could say is, it's weird that that's not, you know, like, I don't know. It's weird. You'd think, but it's not. Who knows at this point? The sister location could have already been up. Uh, X, Y, and Z. I don't fucking know. Okay, so. Uh. <laughs> just continuing on. Um. None of the jump scares in the film as a whole really got me. None of them got me in the least bit possible at all, honestly. Because they already spoiled, like, one of the main ones that would really get you. Even though you see it coming, you know what's gonna happen, it really gets ya. Like, the fucking child's arm coming out of Freddy's mouth. Uh, the fucking animatronic in the back rooms. Shut the fuck up, I know what you're gonna reference, you sons of bitches. Uh, no, like, when the child's arm comes out of Freddy's mouth, I saw that coming. I did. And that was literally in, like, one of the part of the trailers that came out, and one of them were part of them. But, yeah, so it, that didn't really get me. The one that did actually kind of get me was... Okay, periodically throughout the film, Mike Schmidt is having this reoccurring dream in the same forest, or woods, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when, he, when him and his brother and his uh, mother and father were, like, out camping, or at, like, a, you know, like a little family barbecue or some shit like that, not really family barbecue, I don't think. I think it was more or less just like a... It was camping, but... Um, he, he's, he keeps having this dream where he... Uh, his brother gets fucking, you know, taken by a stranger, and that stranger was Afton. <coughs> so that's a thing. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> really dropped the ball on that one. So he keeps having this dream, right? And every time he's had it, it, it's just a different iteration of the same thing. He's there, there's a bunch of kids standing around him in a circle formation, and then they all scatter once he even tries to, like, talk to any of them or ask them questions. Because he's trying to, like, figure out what happened, who that guy was. So they keep showing up, and they keep running. And he, he keeps trying to catch up with them, but he never does. There is one instance in the film... Now, this is the only jump scare that kind of got me. 
was he caught one of the kids. He grabbed him by the arm, and he was, like, trying to talk to them. They swiped a knife at the arm that grabbed him. Or one of his arms. I'm pretty sure it was the one that grabbed the kid by their arm. Um, and the child turns around and screams at him. And they have black eyes with, like, fucking black ink goddamn, like, tears running down their face. And it's like, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. I have a major phobia of black-eyed children, number one, and anything with black eyes to begin with. So if you look up the Zalgo fucking uh, creepypasta, you'll, that motherfucker, yeah. It'll just be like a woman's face with, like, you know, blood all over it and black eyes. Or if you look up uh, the... Emily's here fucking game that Markiplier and uh, Yummy Mash and everyone else played back in the day when that one, like, you know, horror games and indie horror games like that were really running rampant. Then, yeah, you'll see, like, a fucking smiling child. Smiling child. Smiling child with, like, black eyes and, like, you know, obviously blood. Now, it's not the blood, it's the fucking black eyes that really fucking get me. And I don't know why, it's just unsettling. And it's not on everything either. It's just certain things can trigger that fucking bruh, nah, fucking fight or flight response in me. Now, I saw that film, obviously, um, day one, and I thought it was great. But that one, that one jump scare did catch me off guard, because I didn't expect that to be in the movie. <sighs> but then again, who the fuck would? It's, it's FNAF. But then again, I guess it makes sense, because, like, all the children in, like, the pixel art, pixel games, 8-bit style, they'd have, like, black eyes and be crying and shit, so... I guess, from that point of view, it makes sense. But outside of that, that's the only jump scare that necessarily really got me, a little bit. Not made me jump or anything, but, like, I definitely did, like, back up in my seat, like, what the fuck? And then, as soon as it went away, I'm like, I didn't expect none of that, I hope they don't do that again. And if they did, I'm like, I'll admit, you got me, but like, Jesus, man. But now that I think about it, about how that could be a reference to, like, the crying children, which, and that makes sense now that I think about it, because before it's like, what the fuck? And it's like, no, 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 okay, yeah, no, it's settling in my fucking noggin, in my head, in my mind, that, you yeah, know, this is actually part of it, so it's like, whatever. So, yeah, the film is what it is. It's, uh... Some bits are more stranger than others. Some bits are more annoying than others. And the only annoying bit is, like, uh, Mike having the same dream over and over and over and over again. And I get the reason for that, but... That took up a lot of the movie. And then you had, obviously, uh... The one way that, like, uh... The children were being manipulated in the animatronic suits, like, their ghosts or the spirits, whatever the fuck... Now, it's kind of cool that their bodies or their spirits can move independently from those suits. So that's kind of cool. But outside of that, you know, you know. But obviously they're being influenced by a drawing on the wall of a big yellow rabbit. And all the children, like, you know, holding hands on either side of this, like, giant yellow rabbit, which is William Afton. And then, obviously, the little, you know, the Mike's, uh, I keep wanting to say daughter, his sister draws a picture of the, like, you know, the, the rabbit, you know, the yellow rabbit with a fucking knife and all the kids dead. And it's like, oh, well, now we know what you did, asshole. Why that was, like, the means of, like, manipulation and control, I will never fucking know. But it did, no pun intended, set the stage for a, a sequel to uh, come, and it was already talked about that they're gonna make a sequel, so, you know. Um... They, the ending scene for it is William Afton in the Springlock suit dying, bleeding out in the uh, back room area. And you just see like one of the kids staring at him, and then the door closes. Now, all the kids should have been gone, all intents and purposes, but I guess this is a reference to the, the one you should not have killed, and I, let's, let's face it, Sunshine, get your fucking head out of the clouds. You're nothing special. You're just a vengeful spirit because you didn't want to die. But you died. You're not special, neither are the other ones. They were just randomly selected as you were. I don't know, it makes it seem like more paranormal, more witchy than anything. 
the one you should not have killed. I am going to make you suffer. To be fair, I mean, he was a child murderer, so I'm not even going to defend him. I was going to say it's like, bruh. That, the one you should not have killed, that's always stuck in my mind as like a, bro, this is a fucking cliche. But that's besides the point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, getting back on track, it set the stage for a potential sequel, and I couldn't be any happier. I plan to buy this movie on Blu-ray when it comes out, if it isn't already, and I'd, li I'd love to have it, because me and uh, Ethan, we own the Mario movie on Blu-ray. I've seen the movie. I love that movie. And speaking of the Mario movie, the reason why I mentioned that as well. Fun fucking fact. Did you know that the fucking Five Nights at Freddy's movie topped the amount of sales that Mario had? Mario was like the most hyped, the most fucking beloved, and the, mo the highest grossing film in film history. For a while, at least. And then it held that title for a hot minute. And then, obviously, FNAF surpassed it. And here's the interesting thing. There, uh, here's the interesting... Ah, fuck my goddamn... Okay. Here is the interesting thing. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's dry. It's fucking me up. So, you might be wondering, well, it doesn't mean the FNAF movie was better than, you know, uh, Mario. Well... I'm not going to say that it is, but I will openly state, maybe think about this for a second. It topped the film in sales. Yeah, well, that's all it did, and people were disappointed. Yes, but here's the thing. People, this, this movie was streaming day one when it came out on Peacock, and it was obviously in theater on the big screen, right? Right. <coughs> so... The numbers show that more people went to go, went, actually got the fuck up and went to go see the movie in theaters, rather than at home and stream it on TV. Now, don't you think that's a bit interesting? No, you could say, well, Mario could have done that and ten times over. Yes, yes, but again, that's besides the point. It's the fact that... Mario was in theaters exclusively. That was the only way to see it at the time, outside of other areas where it's a bit unorthodox, which is how I ended up, you know, being able to see it, because... Fuck that one bastard that kept fucking us over whenever we would try to go see the movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, it's the fact that they kind of set the bar on that one for, like, not only did the, F the FNAF movie uh, top the sales of Mario. More people, it also, more people want to go see it in theater than stream it at home on Peacock. Now you can say whatever you want about Peacock. I don't really know it too well. I'm not too fond or familiar with it. So, maybe that's the reason I don't know and I could give a fuck. Maybe it was more expensive. I don't fucking know. All I know is the film was great. The film was good. The film was fantastic. And watching it in cinema, it honestly is the only way to do it justice. Outside of taking it home uh, and having it on DVD. Well, DVD slash Blu-ray. Uh, that's the only other way to have it. And mobile devices, because usually they come with a fucking code where you can have a digital version of the goddamn film on, like, you know. You know, you know. Anyway. So yeah, no, I honestly, genuinely, the film was great. The film was good. The references are there. The game, a lot of the games are represented. The characters are nice. The story is, it's 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 pretty riveting. And overall, I think it's an eight point five to nine out of ten movie. Will you just say it because you're a fan? Shut the fuck up. You, there, shut the fuck up, sit down, sit the fuck, sit the fuck down, sir. It's an 8.5 to 9 out of 10. 10 being perfect. Now, the reason why I would say 8.5 to 9 out of 10 primarily is because I like what they did. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. 
I like the direction they went. I like the references that were in there. I love, you know, even though it was PG, it didn't come off as PG. Not gonna lie, I think there was only like one set of kids there watching the film, or one child there, and they left the cinema with their parents the second Bonnie bit someone in half. And it's like, is that really PG? Fuck! And it's like, you know. But yeah, no, I honestly, I, mm, I honestly think the film was nice. I honestly think it couldn't have been done any other way. I really thoroughly enjoyed just every second. The references, the material, the actual, like, method and direction they went with. The overall, like, uh, plot twists and, like, a lot of the mindfuck situations were, you know... Just overall, the nature of the film, it was, in the games itself, it was, it, straight on, fucking nail on the head, onion rings, I thought it was good. But then again, that's just me. That's just personally me. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this film, or watching this film, Watching this video that have seen the film and there are like, it wasn't that good. No, if you go in from a perspective of, this is about Five Nights at Freddy's, not the first FNAF game, just the franchise as a whole. Let's enjoy and whatever potential sequel they make. Honestly, I wouldn't be upset if they made fucking an equal amount of movies as much as the games. I can go for, like, a third film, and after that, it'd probably get a little bit dry, but... You know, at the very least, I'll take a sequel. And not to mention the cameos in there were... Well, one of them was good. The other one was, like, kind of ass. Anyone that knows my channel, I'm not a fan of, uh, fucking Map Pack. Or, you know, i.e. Game Theory. So, Map Pack, in my opinion, uh, he just kind of sucks. And that's only because, bruh, when I... Used to watch him, he had like really good theories and shit. He was fucking solid AF. But like a lot of content creators, he just kinda like let it go to his head, fucked up, was a general fucking generalized asshole slash douche canoe. And I want nothing to do with him. I could give a fucking dying moose's last shit. Now Corey Kenshin though, as the taxi driver, that shit was good. I like that a lot. That was a fucking fantastic moment. Um, I like the reference to Sparky the dog. That old fucking, like, you know, thing that people said. Oh, if you look on this camera, you'll see Sparky the dog and shit. And it's like, no, he's not real. He was never real. You're, you're fucking stupid. But at the time, that's what people would like, wanted to theorize and make stuff up and made their own OCs, X, Y, and Z, and blah, 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 that's not the other thing. They even, the sp they, they, they even had a Sparky the Dog suit in the background. They had a fucking suit of Sparky the Dog. So not only was, like, the diner called Sparky's, but they also had, like, a dog-like suit, which, again, I think that's pretty fucking cool. For what it was, and what it is, at face value, again, just all the references, and there's so many that I haven't picked up on yet, but it's so fucking good. I really enjoyed it. So, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you saw the film, and you liked it, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. If I'm a complete dumbass and you really don't give a fuck let me know Becca let me smash anyway uh, yeah no that's gonna do it for this video so thank you all so much for watching hope you all enjoyed if you did be sure to like and subscribe that helps out a lot uh, fucking links to all that shit will be down in the description below and what have you what have you if you know you know so links link to all this shit's gonna be in the description have fun with that, and I'll see you all in the next video or live stream. Whichever comes first, have yourselves a good day. Uh, bye bye.